I'm in a mountain resort town in Montana, and I'm on my way to one of my favorite antique stores up here. St. Regis has some stuff going. It's got a casino. It has a free trout aquarium, ice cream, restaurants, and saloons. But I stumbled across this weird little thrift shop. Well, this is quite an enterprise that grew out of this real log cabin shack next to the old Mountain Highway. Two Rivers Thrift Store in St. Regis, Montana, complete with mini golf. Interesting combination. Vintage clothing, well, I'm in. We'll take a look. Hmm, the land of free things. That was sort of cute for a moment. Peeling painted flip top table from about $19.70, $20. Some groovy luggage at ungroovy prices, $75. Mm, real leather. Wow. It's definitely packed. And there is more upstairs. Big old ceramic bowl for 44. Some of these are 1980s from the reservations. The black ones are the ones that they have the most interest in these and it does have a signature and it is eight dollars. Hmm. We might have a buy here. Well, this is actually a pretty good thrift store. Mostly not my stuff, but well organized. Things seem to be clean. People seem to be buying stuff. <coughs> Made in Japan, 1930s, two dollars. Holiday. Dry cleaner for dogs and cats. Wow, two dollars and fifty cents. I'm sure that was safe and non-toxic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe not safe to the person giving the bath. Sixty-six dollars. Old kitchen matches. This looks like an old Ferris wheel. World's Fair paperweight. And this was a brand new thing, and there it is. I have one of these packed in the car for less. Brown phone 25. Be nice if it had the extra keys. You better watch yourself around here. St. Regis is on the Clark Fork, and it is in a very pretty valley on the way to paradise. But the reason that we are here is because it also for a long time has been a place of antiques. I have been going to this store for years since it was in its old location near the freeway. It's moved to this larger place in the last year or so. This is the first time I've had a chance to show you, and oh, it's very exciting. Part of the reason it's exciting is because if they have one, they have five. So, milk cans in abundance, $62 each. This is a really cool kettle cauldron on the stand, priced at $350. The stand is the part that's amazing about that. Of course, you know I like these. And if that's the price, that's actually pretty good, $95. We know those sell for more in other parts of the country. And singles are a nice size, but I don't have room for any of this kind of stuff. So as much as I like it, I'm going to head inside as soon as we show you these little motors that could be used to power any sorts of farm equipment. Hercules gas engine, Evansville, Indiana. Huh, funny. It's about where I started this leg of this journey. And there's a few of them. We are on mountain time. And I am so happy to be here to show you this. So let's go inside and show you what they've got. I was here in the dead of winter the last time, that's why I didn't get to do this before. I think the people who realize how hard it is to find and refinish and restore this kind of American oak furniture, for example, are not likely to do giant discount prices on these things. Styles come and go, but in this part of the country, this very high style Victorian from the 1890s is what was in nice houses. And now that Yellowstone is a thing, well, we're seeing a lot of people looking at this sort of mountain lodge western style decorating again and i think it's really cool these all would be a good repair projects at twenty dollars each they're certainly priced fairly for that honey galore that's a fun collection 
nice heart nozzle from the Spokane Fire Department. Both are Indiana. I love these, and here's another really neat looking one. 575. You can find these out there, but you have to be willing to travel because they're heavy to ship. Cute little egg cups, and I see something in here. I think it's rather interesting. It is Bjorn Windblad, as I thought. And no price. I think we'll ask about it. Is that real? Hmm. We'll look for the thing that isn't like the things it's around. This is a figural piece. It is not an egg cobbler in the normal way. It is an egg cup, but it has a different sort of lid to release heat. And look at that compared to everything else, but yet it's priced the same. And it's by a good designer, so I think I got a score there. This is when you look in places like this. Now, this, on the other hand, is not cheap, but wow, what a cool piece. Obviously, the plastic guy in there is a new driver, but this is Police Patrol by Keystone. It's a fantastic vehicle. 500 on the oak cabinet here with all the Maxwell House and Folgers pins. 1950s Pixie, and it's painted all in the face. I think that makes it Japanese. $10. 72 on the Bohemian cut vase, and then the Moss Rose. Now, this is from the middle 1800s. This and tea leaf ironstone were the first two really big patterns that a lot of middle class people bought in the early to mid Victorian period. You can hear them doing work on furniture in the back here. They do restore a lot of these pieces. You have to go back east to find a lot of this sort of thing. I've known a lot of dealers in this part of the business over the years, but these folks have maintained it. Most of the other ones are long since retired. If you're going to have to have shelves and cabinets anyway, why not have nice furniture that you can also sell? They certainly have the variety of all the things you would expect to find in this part of the country. Lots of crockery. People had to be able to put things away so that they could stay safe through the winter. This is Medalta Potteries. I just sold the Winston Churchill mug made by Medalta Medicine Hat, Alberta. The two-gallon tall crock is for sauerkraut. Yes, yum. Nice 1930s set here. Actually, I shouldn't say a set because this is Princess the Bowl, the pattern you see on the right. And this other set, I have to admit, I don't recognize that very delicate and very pretty etch from the 19, late 20s, early 30s. The pews are from Corvallis, Montana, but I really like the big settled bench with the storage there. $1,300. We sold one in Florida at an estate sale and actually got a pretty good price for it. Those are very desirable. They have just the most beautiful furniture here. Let you take a look. American Oak 1890s. I remember we would sell pieces like this, and $2,395 was absolutely a fair price. Because look at the detail. This is a very sweet little set here with the little rolling stool from about 1900, the vanity set there. Lots of silhouettes. They've had a lot of depression glass for a long number of years. And Shawnee pottery. I mean, they really have a whole lot of a whole lot. These are neat because these are for the World's Fairs, this one. Actually, both of these interesting different prices, slightly different makers. You can tell the difference in size and the scenes here, but this is 1909 for the Bon Marche in Seattle for the World's Fair, the first World's Fair, and this one is 1909 with the three graces in the middle in a larger format, made for Stone Fisher of Seattle. It has some staining, unfortunately. There's the Roland and Marcellus mark. I also had classes in this building, which was part of the World's Fair grounds. Very cute rose mead horse shaker, 75 for the pair, only 19 for the tan vase. There's the North Dakota label on it. Tiffin glass here in the black. I already have a piece of this and that's priced about right. Just add your flamingos, $32. That's an LA Potteries from the early 50s. Actually stayed in business for quite a while into the early 70s. Oh. Very pretty lapis and other blue stones and glass. Five dollars each, it says. I'm going to take a look at those. 
And then these are $10 pieces, and I see a very nice, you know, a couple of nice things, this set over here, and this copper pin, and maybe that one. Wow, there's a neat old stove. Yes, mica is fragile, so do not poke it, please. Look what people have done to some of that that is not nice. They used actual sheets of mica. Beautiful piece, though, right out of about 1900 to 1910. I like anything with lots of exposed screws and tacking and that sort of thing. 225 on the stick and ball umbrella stand there. We're right on the railroad line, so of course, Great Northern stuff is going to be expensive, but it's great. 395 for that lantern, they're asking. 220 for the no dial phone with the ringer box. You just dial up the operator and let them do the rest. This is interesting, 1930s with the pressed pipe as part of this and the lighter. All original and all there. That makes this unusual and that's why it's 275. You turn the lighter on its side to turn it on. That's a neat piece. We see this part alone as a lamp fairly frequently and it's about $200 less than that. But the rest of that makes it really unusual. Several wave crest pieces here. I still love wave crest. Some of the prices are under a hundred now. Lots of railroad lanterns. Railroad stuff is so interesting to people in this part of the country because the railroads made all of this possible. I mean, to get through all these mountains, we are up in the Rockies. Southern Pacific, Chicago Rapid Transit, New York, New Haven, Hartford. That's the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul. And Pacific Railroad, Gulf Mobile in Ohio. All those letters stand for something. Look at the really great big anvil. Thirteen seventy-five. The prices of these just keep going up. Ooh, a Gatlin gun, like from the Civil War, where you turn the crank for darts. Seventy-nine fifty. Bother your brother. Montgomery Ward and Company safe nine hundred seventy-five dollars. You would have had to get this by mail order back when this was done around nineteen hundred, and it would have come out on the train. A complete, not terribly old, but old enough Schrade cutlery display there for sale. Isn't this neat with all of the numbered drawers and the records, all the files, all one piece? Twenty-two fifty. I mean, that's your entire business right there. Fun little stuff just to have to a key for your sweetheart, or a display of matching bridal rosettes for your sweet horse. Rounded ends, that's a very different store display for cotton thread around 1900, 1910. This is on hold for 750 and I'm not surprised because, boy, these butcher blocks are very popular now. I still really love these clover leaf tables. This is really neat here, too. I believe that is Admiral Dewey. And in fact, it is called the Dewey, so if I had just looked up, I guess I would have known for sure. Huge price, but what a very, very, very hard to find, very early slot machine this is. I've never seen one of these in person before, honestly. I don't know where they get such things. And yes, the mirror over time did not last very well, but you know what? That could be restored if you really insisted on it, because the rest of it is so amazing. Well, for $3 each, this is... A silly thing that I've got to get the cream of Kentucky, of course. One thing I really like and respect about this place is that they know their stuff. So, for example, they have the right tray. This is Manhattan from the 30s. These glass inserts are Ma Manhattan from the 30s. This sherbet is not a match. So, they're pricing it individually and not trying to pretend that it's a set. And that's because they've been in business for years, and that's why they can sell these kinds of things at high prices to really serious collectors. What a beautiful blue reflective color the carnival on the inside of this Northwood Grape and Cable Berry set is. Seeing this store is what got me interested in looking for general store stuff and scales and coffee grinders and churns and things because it displays so neatly and it's so interesting to see. I have a very small metal spool cabinet in my car right now and 
yeah, seeing this place years ago really inspired me to look for this sort of merchandise because I think there's some really cool aspects to it all. Lobster plate for 13. That might not be a bad deal. Let's see who made it. And how worn. See, there's some wear on the orange. That's a problem. I bet these are Royal Bay Ruth. They're not marked as such, though. I think we'll leave them, but they're neat. People do like anything with lobsters on it. Those are over 100 years old, but there's others that are more recent from the 50s, and people love them, too. And it's just so fun looking at the way they display, too, because they just have so much of one neat thing. And when you have a lot of one neat thing displayed, well, I guess it's kind of easy. Look at all the pinups, for example. And then this amazing carved American piece of furniture once again. Corner cabinets is fifteen ninety five because corner cabinets look how much space you save, as opposed to having this sticking out from the wall. This bookcase on the left looks like one of the ones that the Larkin Soap Company would have given you for buying it for their product. It's priced at two ninety five, which is a good deal. From about 1910, lots of utility. That's about what I got for the last one I sold. This is interesting because it's a drop front with a French style from about 1910, I would say, with all of the curviness to the sides. A combination of some French provincial touches with Art Nouveau, and it's, it's kind of an interesting hodgepodge, as a lot of late Victorian and early Edwardian things were. Cute little boudoir lamp for 78. Well, this place sure is fun, and I really enjoy showing it off now. Am I in the market for a bunch of big, huge furniture? Well, of course not, but it's wonderful to see such a great assortment in one place. There's just not much like this anymore. I'm shop at the next Spokane Hester's Antique show in the fall, and then drive up here and go shopping, and you will have a great time in a very full car, I'm sure. The prices are very reasonable on things for what they are. I mean, I'm not saying that they're giving anything away, although I am finding a few things for resale, which is nice. Oh yes, this is to keep the calf away from mom when they want the calf to wean. Not a very nice thing, but effective. Tons of tools, a lot of lead soldiers, a whole bunch of barber bottles, and these look like originals. Unfortunately, a lot of reproductions were made in the 1980s particularly. But these all look legit. Most of them do not have their stopper. A stopper would have generally been an affair like this with porcelain and a cork around it. 1870s to 1906, yes. They were filled with all sorts of stuff and left at the barber. And then in 1906, the Pure Food and Drug Act, it said, no, 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 you can't leave your stuff at the barber anymore. That was the end of these and shaving mugs in a lot of cases. It's kind of hard to believe that Candlewick, as good quality as it was, was sold in places like Woolworths and Cresties, because it's a little better quality than that. But I think that was Imperial Glass's way of outlasting the competition, because as Heise went out of business and other companies started to falter, Imperial ended up picking up a lot of their molds when producing things in other colors, and it kept them going for quite a while. There were 641 pieces in the Candlewick line. So if you like it, and a lot of people sure have, this is a good time to be collecting because there's a lot of variety. I guess to my taste, if I was going to have big American oak furniture, I would want carving on every single piece and lots of leaded glass. Just go for it. A whole lot of Riverside Glassworks creases pattern. Yes, the Imperial Green with Gold Trim. These folks really do know their stuff. It's a great pattern. It's pretty identifiable. It has been reproduced. Again, you have to be careful of certain pieces, but you can look that up. It's very easy to tell the new stuff. Well, first of all, hasn't been used, and this stuff was made in the 1890s, so it certainly should have been slid around a table or two. And in addition to that, you can tell by the greasy feel of the newer glass. Fiesta just makes everything look fun, doesn't it? Doesn't matter where you put it. Oh, chamber pots. The lowly chamber pot that you know everyone had to have one. These were very important, and so why not make it pretty? And better yet, why not have a lid? Are there a lot of collectors of these now? No, but maybe they should be. They're completely sterilizable, and it's not like you're going to cook beans in them. Another beautiful cabinet here. 
again with leaded glass. Interesting, the convex and concave panes. Made in 1903, they said. $27.95, it's just beautiful. And again, if you're going to have the classics like Roseville, why not have some of the better patterns and pieces like this really great blue fuchsia piece here? Priced at $300. Perhaps the most popular line of the floral lines. I have to admit, I like a petite sideboard because I like to hang out on the wall, so I don't want something quite so massive. So these are appealing to me. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. Good for her. I stole this necklace from your store about 15 years ago. I hate that I did that, and I'm truly sorry. Please forgive me. I hope it finds a good home. A woman from afar. Well, good for her. You know, we really do rely. There was such a high cost of mistrust, and in the antique and vintage business, you've got to be able to trust each other. The pipe with the mountain goat is not a bad price at $30. I would probably put it closer to 50 because the goat is a nice design, even though it does seem to be transferware. This is German with the cherry stem, probably right after the Second World War, but it's possible that it's pre-war as well. It just seems pretty white in the porcelain. I've done it my whole life. There's an insulator for you. This is the annex, and you can see why, and there's some neat stuff in here. And I'll bet some of it you could negotiate on because... Anything that looks like a project, they probably would be glad to let you do instead of them. Roll top desk 410. See, these are where you do a little work and you get a bargain on some of them. Or they just don't have room to put them in right now. That's a nice piece. I really like this. Eight ninety five on the stick and ball hall seat. Big fan of stick and ball furniture from around 1890. Ah, uh, the GE monitor top refrigerator. Yes, I remember finding one in California for about these prices, four fifty each. I was so excited. I went back. I got a trailer hitch installed. I drove down in my Jeep. I rented a trailer. I dragged it back up. Oh my gosh, what a backbreaker that was! The engine is on top, and that pushed the cold down more effectively. So, this is nineteen twenty six. One of the first refrigerators that it up. Is it all modern? There's a tiny little bit of the freezer. But all of the weight is up here in the motor, which is this thing. This thing weighs two-thirds of the weight of this entire apparatus, even though this is all steel as well. Great pedestal. Went, went on the top. There's some neat fretwork. San Francisco, four picks framed together, $20. They like the stick and ball like I do. There's another piece. Neat Crosley Amateur Radio police band from about 1940, it appears. $98 is not really a bad price on that. And then back here, employees only. See, like I said, they fix things, obviously, all the time. So, pretty impressive operation here. If they find something that is just not in great shape, they are going to put it back together so that it can live on. And I think that is the ultimate repurposing. And as you can see, they do a wonderful job of it. What a neat little salesman sample size sideboard. Fox did the Overland Express. That was right about the time that the airline collusion scandal started to dawn. About 1929-30. Uh, All sorts of fun to frame pieces. A lot of our Atkinson Fox. He was Canadian, and we're not that far from the border. He did a lot of mountain scenes, so popular here, of course. What other paper ephemera do they have here? Needlecraft. I found that these can be more valuable than you would think. I have found these are generally worth about a dollar. Right on, I'll scroll back over. <laughs> Wow, another room full of really great old stuff. Uh, if you're enjoying this as much as I am, please do click the thumbs up button and like this. Please leave a comment. Check out our membership packages. If you click that join button or look for memberships under the dotted line of any description of any of my videos, you'll find out about early access and chat and all sorts of things that are perks depending on the level of membership. So thank you for everybody's support. And let's go on now because there are some really great things to show. Northwestern Telephone, 
I want to know where this came from. They've got to have some background on Peru, Indiana. Oh, a friend of mine grew up in Peru. It was made there, huh? Soundproof double doors. Wow, how interesting. And yes, you do see there is another door in there, so you could actually be in there and not be heard. Wow, that would be a great isolation chamber. Really cool piece. $29.95. Somebody bought a mantle. See, a lot of people are building homes up here, so architectural elements. We did very well with architectural elements early in my career where people were restoring Victorian homes. Two-door medicine cabinet. Another stick and ball piece. Ooh, I need one of these for my storehouse in Arlington, but that looks like it would be splintery in the wrong places. Mm, not a winning toilet seat cover. The floor model record players and Victrolas are not selling for as much as the tabletop by and large. This is a Brunswick and it's a nice piece, but it's a fairly common one and needs some repair to veneer. It looks like all the heads and everything are there. And the crank, which is good. Only $160 because it needs work. That's about what I got for the last one I had that needed work. If you liked oddities, I would think you would appreciate this spider web design in this oak buffet priced at $550 from about 1910. Naturalistic designs were actually popular in that period. This place is great. It's amazing. It has some really good stuff. They have maintained this quality and this caliber and this type of merchandise in this store for decades now. Lots of stacking lawyers, bookcases, and bookcases in general. Clearly these folks are outfitting people for miles and miles and miles and in many states with this sort of thing. This is not just a local focus store. It's a place that might seem like an unlikely location, but it is a place where you could find this sort of merchandise back when they were amassing this collection. And now that it's harder to find, well, they've got it. I like the copper banding here, this faux copper, faux painting on here. That was popular in about 1910. Oh, what a neat hanger. Hangers and racks like this almost always seem to sell because you see so few of them these days. And this one does have a sold tag on it. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get to find out how much they got. Well, cheers to St. Regis. Here is my Huckleberry Shake. Had to have one before I left town. And I got some really cool things. They only charged me $10 instead of 11 for my three items. And that Bjorn with that egg cup, I haven't seen one of those in ages. I don't know what they sell for, but I'm imagining maybe 35 to 50. So I thought that was a pretty terrific find. One last stop before we leave the Rockies. As a kid, I always wanted my dad to come this way because then we could stop at the 50,000 silver dollar casino. This is a giant gift store and has lots of other stuff, but it is all about the silver dollar bar. The silver dollars and the silver dollar bar occupy a whole lot of high space where you can't get to them. And then there's a giant gift shop. Oh, and a motel. <laughs> These guys have waited a while to be served. A whole lot of those are Eisenhower dollars. But in here, my gosh, they've got names of all the folks who left them way back in the day, I guess. And you can tell we're getting into the older ones here because these are the peace dollars and the Morgan dollars. And just based on that number that they claim to have today, if they were all silver, that's about $2 million in silver on these walls. Now, some of them are not silver. The Eisenhowers are not silver, but these early ones definitely are. And who knows? There could be scarcities in there. Somewhere in there, there might be one worth 300 or 500 or 5,000. I just remember being fascinated by this place when I was a kid and the fact that they would let me into a bar during daytime. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll take a few silver dollars of your own back with you. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.